Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. It's time for uh, another look at PSM, the 100% independent PlayStation magazine uh, that you might remember from the uh, late 90s, got started in uh, 97. And this is issue number nine. And uh, yeah, nine, where's number eight? Uh, you're asking maybe, uh, <laughs> I don't have number eight. I've got to skip issue number eight, unfortunately. Um, these are hard to find, man. I've been looking around for these uh, just to kind of fill in the gaps on some of the ones that I that I didn't already have. And um, yeah, I don't know. Some people really want to uh, sell issues of this for uh, quite a bit on eBay, or more than I'm willing to pay anyway. So, uh, you know, I'll keep at it. Maybe I'll stumble across issue number eight. But in the meantime, we're going to look at number nine here. And as you can see on the cover, Tekken 3, right? They've got, uh, let's see, it says massive strategy guide in there. They've got a whole bunch of screens. Uh, so you'll see they got a pretty big preview in there. Uh, plus they're going to look at uh, Legacy of Kane 2, some PlayStation toys, and uh, some news on some video game movies, because back then people really were excited to uh, hear about games getting turned into movies. Uh, and then you see they're also uh, calling out the memory card stickers in there. And, uh, you know, I don't remember if this issue that I've got still has those stickers, but we'll, we'll check it out. Uh, so, inside cover, we've got an ad for Saga Frontier. This is one of those uh, Squaresoft RPGs from back when Squaresoft was really in their heyday, uh, in my opinion. Uh, this era in the 32-bit the days, this was when they were just killing it. I didn't play Saga Frontier, though, uh, so I can't really comment on whether or not that was good. Here we've got a big two-page ad for Final Fantasy Tactics. Very striking imagery, right? Guys galloping through uh, some kind of uh, gateway on their chocobos, or maybe out, you know, leaving an area on their chocobos. Very cool, catches your eye. And so uh, I think toys are kind of the, um, toys are kind of like the big thing this issue. So the editors have had a little fun and they've taken uh, some pictures of action figures in place of uh, their normal editor uh, photos here. And, uh, yeah, they mention, uh, you know, kind of in the, the lower left corner again, you know, the process of putting together the uh, cover art. And uh, you can see, as usual, they nailed it on, like, the second try, uh, which seems to be pretty common uh, if you're looking at these. And uh, it's just always kind of fun to see how those get put together. Uh, but, yeah, let's take a quick look at um, the editors and their action figure stuff here, right? Because they have a little fun with this. So uh, Chris Slate, the editor-in-chief, his uh, action figure feature, if you squeeze my arms together, a giant basketball flies out of my ass. Please don't do that. <laughs> Sounds painful. Uh, Stephen Frost, uh, action figure feature. I don't do anything special, but you can only get me with 10 proof of, point, uh, proof of purchase points from PSM. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, back in the day when you'd have to uh, send in a bunch of barcodes from... Uh, whatever it was, cereal boxes or something like that, and then they'd send you some crappy toy. Uh, Noah, Mr. DJ, Mr. Music here, uh, action figure feature. You can twist my head off and stash stuff in my hollow body, and my outer shell is smell-proof too. I like that, a little bit of drug humor. I don't really do the whole marijuana thing, but uh, that's funny, you know, a dude who's DJing, right? That's kind of funny, it's fitting. Uh, we'll keep going, these aren't bad. Uh, Bill Paris. Uh, he is the um, Japanese correspondent. His action figure feature, if you turn my torso, I'll throw Tetsubishi in your feet. Just ask that punk G.I. Joe. He still walks with a limp. I do not know what Tetsubishi is. Uh, I can't. I, I, you got me. I don't know. That, that one was a miss for me. Uh, Blake, his feature. I can say two things. Grant Morrison is a god and onward to Del Taco. Boy, that sounds like a crappy action figure. And uh, Banzai Chibi-chan. He says, I come packed with all sorts of top secret PlayStation goodies, like the plans for the PS2. So this was 98. I don't know if I called that out uh, at the beginning here, but this is, uh, what is this, May? I should look at what, yeah, May 98. Okay, perfect. So yeah, PS2, still just like a whisper in the winds at this point. Definitely not a thing yet. Big, big, big two-page ad for Tekken 3 here, right? Heihachi Mishima staring at you. And that was a really good looking character model. Uh, for, for back in this day, man. That was a really impressive character face in that ad. Just to see something like that. You know, I know it's not quite what he looked like in game, but uh, at least in the cutscenes and stuff like that, for sure. So here we are in our table of contents. Uh, they're going to, of course, talk about Tekken 3. They've got some stuff on Need for Speed 3, Hot Pursuit. They dive into uh, video game movies for a bit. 
Uh, looks like they talk about game toys. That's cool. Some action figures. Haven't really seen that before. Uh, and then uh, looks like I'm looking for reviews. I see previews. Okay, they don't list out the reviews specifically, you know, each game, but uh, that's okay. We'll get to that. But yeah, onward. Flipping the page here. Yeah. Thought I had two for a moment there. All right, so they're looking at Legacy of Kane 2, Soul Reaver, and uh, they're wondering if that is going to be like a Zelda killer, right? And uh, that, I remember Kane 2, it was... It was cool. It was different. It was a very uh, barren feeling game in a lot of ways to me. I loved Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. Um, that game was really high on my list of, of great PlayStation games for a long time. Still is, honestly. Uh, but Cain 2, uh, Soul Reaver rather, um, you know, kind of got mixed feelings on that. It did some really cool stuff with like the warping of the world where, um, you know, Raziel, the, the hero, could like do this thing with his arms where he would kind of twist and the entire world around him would shift and do like an alternate version of the universe. And you'd have like, you know, columns would be taller or shorter or whatever. So that you could like reach different places by climbing onto them and that kind of thing, right? Um, yeah, just just very neat at the time. I uh, haven't seen a ton of games do something like that in the meantime. But, um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting to look back at uh, what they had to say about it back then before it was out. Uh, now, the video game movies is the thing on the next page, and uh, this is funny to me, man, because this was back when we didn't have too many video game movies. Um, Mortal Kombat had been out, I think Street Fighter had been done, um, but, you know, I don't know, man. I, I guess the shitty Mario Brothers movie was a thing that came and went, and that was pretty bad, but uh, I don't think there were a ton of video game movies yet. Certainly not yet, so... Uh, we've got Tomb Raider that they're talking about front and center here, and that's the Angelina Jolie movie. Uh, sounds like in their article, Paramount had just wrapped up the rights and they were going to start shopping around for people to uh, put the thing together. Uh, and then there's also rumors of Duke Nukem, Interstate 76, uh, Wing Commander, and then, uh, I, you know, I don't know that any of those happened. I know Duke didn't. Um, Wing Commander happened. Interstate 76, I don't remember, unless it was like some straight-to-video thing. But Resident Evil, Doom, and Final Fantasy, yeah, those all happened. Uh, yeah, the Final Fantasy one was weird because it wasn't tied to any other games. It was uh, just like every other game and had no real relation to anything in Final Fantasy that had happened before. And I think that caught a lot of people off guard. They were looking for the, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII, the movie, basically. Uh, so we got another Net Your Rose update and then an ad for Paperboy because uh, Midway, I guess, was putting out a collection with it looks like six games on... Uh, one disc. Woo, that's a whole lot of classic gaming, right? Mm. Uh, speed Racer ad, and then Gossip Columns here. So we've got, uh, looks like they're still looking at Metal Gear Solid that hasn't come stateside yet. They're looking at a fighting game called Air Guys. And uh, let's see, oh, Bust a Move. They've got uh, Bust a Move coming, and they're kind of looking at that. Hasn't made its way stateside yet. And then, uh, one that I find kind of interesting here is the column in the lower right, Too Much Twisted Metal. And they're saying uh, single track, and they have um, they've put together the Twisted Metal 1 and 2 games at this point, right? Uh, they're no longer owned by Sony, so they're saying uh, single track is allegedly planning a new game in the genre inspired by the original Twisted Metal. Sony maintains rights to the name Twisted Metal, and the name of the new project is not yet known. There are concerns that with the addition of this title, the vehicular combat genre will become overly crowded. Activision's Vigilante 8 and Sony's Twisted Metal 3 are already vying for the same consumer dollar, soon to be joined by this new title. Someone could well come back broke on this deal. So yeah, uh, you know, they want to talk about... Uh, yeah, actually, I should back up for a second, because as, as I mistakenly said, Sony no longer owns them. I don't know why that came out of my mouth. They didn't own them in the first place. It was just, uh, you know, they were making a first-party game, or, you know, sec what, second-party, I guess. I don't know. Um, but they didn't own Single Track, or Single Track wouldn't be off on their own making a non-twisted metal game. Uh, so, yeah, just minor correction there. But interesting, because I love car combat games. I, I like Vigilante 8 a lot. I like Twisted Metal 1 and 2. Um, there are some parts of Twisted Metal 3 and 4 that I like as well, although they were mostly a big disappointment. Um, but I never played Rogue Trip, which is the name of the game that they're talking about here from Single Track. It's called Rogue Trip uh, Vacation 2012, and it's 2019 as of the, as of the time that I'm uh, recording this, right? So 
it's kind of funny to look back at a thing that's seven, you know, supposed to happen seven years ago, but be in like the far future yet. But uh, yeah, I'll have a video on Rogue Trip in the future. I do have a physical copy of that. And that's one that you won't find on PlayStation Network, uh, unfortunately. And I think that's probably due to the uh, licensing deals that they had to make for the music uh, because they had like Mighty Mighty Boss Tones on the soundtrack and like some other bands, I think. But uh, I know Boss Tones were on there for sure. But anyway, I've lingered on here long enough. Let's keep it going. You got your Q&A section. Uh, I'll just pull one over, or I'll pull one over. I will read one of these really quick. This is what happens when you're like reading and talking at the same time. You start to say what you're reading uh, <laughs> by mistake. But, uh, oh, this is just like a dev commentary or dev Q&A about Need for Speed. Okay, I've changed my mind. Sorry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to read these. Uh, you can pause the video and read the whole thing if you want to. Uh, big two-page ad for Vigilante 8. That's pretty cool. That's a that's a striking ad, right? Big old school bus decked out with you know missiles and Gatling gun and stuff. Yeah, very striking, very cool. And then it looks like here we've got a calendar of sorts. They've got their kind of projected release dates and stuff. Uh, always funny to see these in these magazines, considering how uh, far off in advance you would get um, you know stuff put to print. So like something gets put to print and then, you know, f four months later or whatever, it's really, really outdated, but uh, it takes a long time to kind of correct that stuff in the next issues. Uh, but they've got their most wanted and it looks like Legacy of Kane Soul Reavers at the top there, Metal Gear Solid at number two, Colony Wars, Codename Vendetta at number three, Vigilante 8 at number four, Abe's Exodus at five, Mortal Kombat 4 at six, uh, Tomba at seven, N2O, uh, which is kind of a cool, like, rhythm shooter type game. Um, very, very unique. Uh, number eight. Number nine is Bust a Move. And number ten is Tenchu. So, uh, here we are in the Bill Paris Nihon game otaku section, where he's talking about uh, your Japanese games, things that uh, we could look forward to, like, six months later in the States, or, or perhaps longer, depending on the game. And uh, oh, I'm going to just get rid of a quick notification on the set there so I can see what I'm doing again. And uh, yeah, just kind of looks like they've got a top sellers list. They've got kind of like talking about some of the things they've seen over there. They've got the return of Chibi's turns, terms rather, as usual. Uh, so you can kind of sort of learn maybe just enough Japanese to get you through some of these games if you're going to import them and have a crack at it. Uh, but yeah, then the, the big thing here, I think, that's worth calling out is Shadow Tower. They're looking at that. And uh, this is early days of From Software, right? So they even call it out here in the first sentence, From Software, who brought you the King's Field series, planning to bring an RPG called Shadow Tower this June. So, um, you know, I never played this one. I don't remember if it even came to the States. I, I think it did. I could be mistaken, but I think it came to the States, but I just never played it. Um, but ever since Demon Souls came out on the PS3, I kind of started to learn a little bit more about the From Software back catalog. Uh, but I never bothered to look into whether or not I needed to play that one. I guess I just kind of figured, oh, it's something they did back then, you know. But anyway, moving on, got an ad for the uh, Tekken 3 strategy guide. And then we've got the first page of the reviews section. And uh, looks like they're going to look at DOA, or Dead or Alive. Uh, as well as um, Need for Speed 3. Those are probably the two big call-outs this issue. And then we've got the backlog section, so you can see what they've been reviewing games at in previous issues. But here we go, Dead or Alive, getting four and a half stars. That's pretty damn good. And uh, they were big fans of it. You remember the, the previous video I did, issue number seven, should have been the Dead or Alive issue, and uh, they blew that one out. Really, really dug it from the sounds of it. And Reboot gets renewed or reviewed here. Reboot's interesting because... Um, that had like its own Saturday morning cartoon back in the 90s. It was this thing that was on TV. And if you would have asked me, you know, they're going to put out a video game. How do you think it's going to do? I would have said, I don't know, garbage. <laughs> One out of five maybe, right? But uh, it seems like the guys here at PSM actually liked it. They gave it three and a half, which is pretty respectable. So uh, just kind of something interesting worth calling out, worth pointing out. Uh, looks like we're looking at uh, NBA Shootout 98, Judge Dredd, and then, of course, Need for Speed 3, Hot Pursuit. Uh, for me, the whole left page there is pretty uh, 
ignorable. <laughs> um, it's the Need for Speed 3 review that matters here because I, I dug racing games back then. I mean, I still do, but um, Need for Speed back when it was really hot and, you know, uh, one of the kings of racing, basically, uh, at least on home consoles. Um, yeah, they were killing it back then. And this is another one of those uh, games where they had knocked it out of the park. They gave it a four and a half, which is pretty great. You know, it's just shy of the perfect score. So really, that's uh, that, that would have said to me must buy back then. Uh, Speed Racer, Triple Play, 99. Pitfall 3D and Punky Skunk. Those are all kind of three games I don't really care about and didn't back then. So I'm going to move along here. All right. World War III will be fought on the PlayStation game console. That's hilarious. All right. Yeah. Ad for War Games DEF CON. I didn't play that. Big ad for MLB 99. I didn't play that. Ah, oh, but here we go. Tekken. Tekken 3. Big two page, two plus page ad actually. I think there's another page or two after this. Uh, but here you've got some great screenshots. Uh, you've got some good character art pasted in there as well. And uh, yeah, this, this was a big deal back then, Tekken 3. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna have a video on the um, channel here that you can hopefully find a link to uh, at the end of this video. Um, I say hopefully because I'm gonna have this up and the plan is to get the Tekken video up pretty soon after. Or maybe even together if I'm lucky, so we'll see. But uh, yeah, I love Tekken 3. I was a huge fan. This was an event game when it came out. Seriously, it really was. Um, you'll see when we get to uh, the review next month or the month after, whenever it is. Uh, I think they're going to give it a perfect score. And rightfully so, it remains you know, just a super tight fighting game. It's one of the best fighting games ever made in that it's like still playable. Like You can go back to it very tight, very uh, you know, great sounds and stuff, very fluid and um yeah it's just kind of one of those ones that stood the test of time and granted you know it's been outdone by um <coughs> excuse me it's been outdone of course by other tekken games uh that have come out since then but uh you know this is still this is still perfectly serviceable as a fighting game i mean there's a reason they put it on the playstation classic it's because a lot of people love it so all right, so ad for MLB 99 there. You got a coupon for uh, Sears. Man, rest in peace, Sears. Uh, we've got a page ad, or a page preview, rather, for Unholy War, which I never played back then. Uh, VR Baseball 99, uh, which I also didn't play back then. Great two-page ad for Einhander. Uh, check out that big missing chunk of Earth right there. Man, Squaresoft was just killing it back then. Squaresoft was awesome. I miss the Squaresoft of those days. I don't know what they're doing these days. Seems like they can't get anything out in a timely manner, but like in the, the PlayStation era, they were just cranking out hit after hit, and Einhander was one of them. And one that they've never revisited, too, which is a real shame. Uh, they really need to do something with Einhander again. Uh, again, another one that I'll have a video of on the channel here very soon. Bio Freaks, uh, you know, I think that was a fighting game. I don't really remember anything about it. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Midway takes three fighting into a dark and violent future. I was kind of looking at the screenshots, trying to parse it out there, but uh, yeah, I didn't play it. Don't really have a, a, an opinion on it. I think it was generally kind of regarded as like, okay. Uh, the Grand Stream Saga, another RPG. Um, I never played this one either. You know, looking at these screens though and the art and stuff, this totally looks like it would have been the kind of thing I would have enjoyed back then, so... Yeah, I don't know how I managed to miss out on this one. God knows I was playing like every RPG that came out back in those days. Uh, and then we've got a preview of War Games DEF CON, that game that uh, had the big two-page ad recently. Got our subscription cards. And then Better to Die Together. What do you think that's an ad for? Then Face Diablo Alone. Oh, yeah. Diablo on PlayStation 1. I loved that port. This was how I played Diablo, all right? I loved it. Uh, I didn't have a PC back then, so this was my access to Diablo, and I was so happy with it. Still uh, have a copy today. It's very good. Maybe get a video of that up pretty soon, too. Uh, X-Men vs. Street Fighter EX. I'm pretty sure they dropped the EX off that title and just called it X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Uh, and then uh, Vigilante 8. And they're looking at Vigilante 8 here, and uh, it's cool because... You know, it just looks like <laughs> it just looks like an action-packed game. As you're looking at these pictures here, right? You got the you got vehicles on fire and stuff. You got laser beams getting shot out of them and stuff. Yeah, that. Yep, 
okay, car combat game. Yeah, that that looks good, right? That's what you would say reading this back then, or what I said, I guess. And uh, that's why I ended up picking up that game and uh, really enjoying it quite a bit. Still preferred my Twisted Metal too, but I like Vigilante 8. It's very good. ODT, which stands for Or Die Trying. Uh, you know, I didn't play that back in the day, and I didn't play Akuji the Heartless either. Uh, but I do find the scantily clad woman on the Akuji page uh, kind of funny, right? She's wearing more clothing around her, uh, between her ankles and thighs, than she is on the rest of her body. And that's just so indicative of where gaming was at back in these days. I think that game was regarded as being pretty good, though. I don't know. I, it's, it's one I didn't play. Uh, let's see. Danger Girl number one. I think... Is that... Yeah, okay. It's a comic book. It says... I wanted to say maybe they made a game out of it, too, but uh, I don't remember. So, <laughs> Video Game Toy Mania. We're looking at uh, action figures and stuff here that uh, were based on video games. And, uh, ooh, Primal Rage. Check it out. I remember seeing those in stores. They probably ended up at, like, big lots and stuff. Because, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, Primal Rage was a big deal for a while, but I think they... I think they may have overshot on how popular it actually was uh, with like some of the marketing and stuff. It, it was big, don't get me wrong, it was big. Um, but I think they may have thought of themselves as like on the same level of a Mortal Kombat and they just weren't. But uh, So yeah, here we go. We've got uh, cool X-Men and um, Resident Evil figures, right? We've got some, actually these Duke Nukem ones down here are pretty cool looking. Um, but I actually remember seeing those Resident Evil ones make it to uh, store shelves, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Looks like Earthworm Jim over here on the left. Look how crappy that Johnny Cage figure looks in comparison to some of these other ones, though. I mean, like, look around the page and then look at Johnny Cage there. <laughs> he looks like a cheap knockoff of the rest of these or something. Yeah. Huh. What else we got here? Uh, we got the Tyrant figure, and uh, it looks like they are talking about um, maybe there are, maybe there's going to be Tekken 3 figures coming on the way. That's cool. All right, so Road Rash 3D, join us in the race to give blood. That's great. That's a, that's a cool ad. It's kind of edgy. It's very 90s. Uh, Need for Speed 3, we've got the strategy guide here. I'll just linger on that for a second longer. And they've got maps, which is kind of interesting, like race course maps. And I guess they're calling out specific things at like each turn. It's kind of interesting. Interesting approach to doing like a strategy guide for a racing game. I wouldn't really think about doing it like that. Gran Turismo. Looks like they're just talking about all these different cars and stuff. And uh, while I did play Gran Turismo, I was not like really super hooked on it, honestly. It was, uh, it was too simulation for me. Um, but here we've got an ad for Grand Theft Auto, the first one, right? And, uh, look at these, look at these people in here. These are like so, yeah, these are, these are some 90s ass outfits right here. Uh, especially the dude on the left with his, uh, Jinko looking jeans and his black hoodie and all that. Yeah. Funny. All right. Tekken 3 strategy guide here. We've got combos, move lists, right? And uh, they're doing everybody, it looks like here, which is cool. Game had a big enough roster back then where uh, putting out something like that or putting it in your magazine would have been an effort. And we've got an ad for uh, Forsaken. Now, this is fun because Forsaken uh, just had a, uh, like a remaster of sorts, right? Like uh, they, they put this out. I think you can get it digitally. I don't know if there's a physical copy out there for consoles, but uh, I'm pretty sure you can get this on the uh, digital storefronts and they've kind of made this but better um, and that's that's just always kind of cool I like seeing like these early 3d games get revisited like this uh, code junkies back when games had cheat codes and stuff in them so we've got uh, WCW Nitro there's got to be like a wrestling game in every issue just about it feels like because uh, there's always wrestling games coming out Load Runner on there, Skull Monkeys, looks like Auto Destruct. Ooh, Nightmare Creatures, that's one that we covered on the channel here. Uh, baby Monsters, how cool is this? Oh wow, so they're very tiny. They could still take you out with as much force as the normal size monsters though. Wow, that's interesting. You just don't see stuff like that anymore, you know? Now you got your Game Shark codes, and then we're on to the letters section. 
And uh, I'll just kind of spread this out a little bit better here. And if you want to have a pause and read some of these or something, uh, you know, have that at Haas. But um, I don't think I'm going to stop to read too many of these. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of cool, you know, talking about PlayStation 2. What do you guys think? Is it coming now? Is it coming later? What happened to great video game music? That's funny. Uh, it'll be interesting to go back to next month's uh, um, issue, or maybe it's two months from now when they actually publish the letters from that, because honestly, I think there's a ton of great video game music in the PlayStation era. I might even be in one of those issues where they respond. I'm not sure. I remember writing a letter to them and seeing it get published at one point. I'll have to look for it. Uh, more letters here, more uh, fan art, or reader art, rather. And it looks like uh, we've got some cool uh, Fatal Fury uh, art there with Terry Bogard. And uh, some Street Fighter stuff going on. And then the PSM crew themselves uh, mixed in with, uh, looks like, Seven of Nine from Star Trek. <laughs> that's a joke about... Uh, Gary, I suppose that's supposed to be. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, that's it for letters, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, nope. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. I forgot about Smart Bomb. Smart Bomb, the uh, comic that they have at the end of each issue. And uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty fun that they would do these with screenshots and stuff and put these, uh, put these word bubbles in there and kind of make jokes out of it. I like it. And then uh, an ad for a 900 number so you could call and get codes and tips and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and run up a huge phone bill. Yeah, and then we've got some photos from the uh, crew over the course of uh, when this issue was put together, it looks like. Or, or around the time, roughly, because it looks like they went on a little snow vacation here, skiing vacation or something. Got challenges, get all the secret characters for Tekken 3. Uh, get all the characters in Hot Shots Golf, and then get all the gold medal cars in Gran Turismo. And, uh, oh no, I've got a little bit of a rip going on here. Let's have to unfold this. Oh, that sucks. I didn't realize this was sitting like that. I'll have to take a little more care when I put this one away in a moment here. But, um, yeah, they're talking about the next issue. What can you expect? They're going to have more Tekken 3. They're going to have a special report from TGS. They're going to look at Mortal Kombat 4 for the first time, which was a big deal back then. And uh, then they got more stuff. They say we got Mega Man Legend, uh, Gran Turismo, Tomba, Soul Reaver, Metal Gear Solid. And uh, that's it. And then we're going to have an awesome two-page ad for Breath of Fire 3, which is uh, one of my favorite RPGs from back then. Uh, Capcom really did a great job with that one. Absolutely love it. And then the back cover is an ad for Gex, Enter the Gecko. So yeah, Gex all over the place. All right, so that is uh, issue nine of PSM. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. hope you uh, had a fun time going down memory lane with me here. I always like looking at these things. We're going to have more of these on the way. I've got uh, issue 10 up next. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll get that episode eight at some point, or issue eight rather at some point. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to find it somewhere. I have to find it for, uh, you know, less than an arm and a leg, but I would love to get it up here. In the meantime, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one, and check out the related videos that should be popping up any moment here, uh, like Tekken 3, and uh, hopefully, pretty soon, a link to the next issue. See you next time.